All right, my friends, so I just got done watching Devin Carroll's video where he interviewed a congressman, uh, I think it's Congressman Barton, forgot his first name, Jack or John. And there used to be a Congressman Barton who was a, more of a blue dog Democrat. Um, I think he was from Texas, and I don't believe this guy was uh, Devin's uh, representative. He didn't sound like he was from Texas, but I might be mistaken. Uh, but it's about the Social Security, his Social Security bill that uh, he's putting through the House now. And actually, I'm a big fan. And I'll share with you why here in just a second. I'm a big fan for a couple of reasons. One, I think for political expediency, I think it's, it's actually quite good, frankly. And I'll share with you why. And two, I think it will help out a lot of people without, without question. So the two reasons for that. Now, I want to be very clear. I'm coming from the libertarian right, all right? I'm not coming from the... Uh, the socialistic, democratic socialistic left, the AOC, the, what's the name, Alexander Cortez, or whatever her name is. No, 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 no. That, that's the farthest thing from where I am. But I'm not, by any stretch of the imagination, a Chamber of Congress right winger either, not the least. I'm uh, absolutely, if, if, if the Democrats hadn't, uh, or the left, I should say, haven't so abused the term anarchist, that's where I'd fall in. Uh, but for those of us on the right, a voluntarist, uh, volunteerism is more what we would uh, uh, subscribe ourselves or describe ourselves as because anarchism has been taken over by communists, which is, I mean, you can't have anarchism and communism. The two things don't go hand in hand. Uh, so for a free, like, a freedom loving right winger, which is what I am, I love America. I do believe in a strong defense. I do believe in national borders. Uh, you got, you're up here on the right-hand side, for sure, on the, the right of the political opinion. But up here is beyond just this false dichotomy of left and right, because what if you don't believe in any of this? What if you believe up here? Where do you fall in the, di the dynamics of political nature? Well, you fall up here, which is beyond the dichotomy, again, the false dichotomy of left versus right, because I'm up here. I believe in a lot of stuff on the Democrats, for sure. Lots of stuff on that. Of the left wing, but the one thing I do think is that the left uh, that that is a threat right now for sure. I mean, all these people are saying there's a rise in white nationalism. This is silly. The threat is from the Antifa types and on the left, and we, we got to deal with that. And I think the way to deal with that, frankly, is, is to recognize the politics behind Social Security planning and how it can benefit not just the political normalcy, the just normal politics, which in of itself is dirty. I get all that without question. But it is the best thing we got, like Ben Franklin said. I mean, or some guy said, look, of all the, the political things out there, dem, uh, democracy is the worst, but it's still better than all the rest. Uh, maybe it's Churchill. I don't know who said that. I think it's Franklin. Either way, it's the best thing we got, and we want to keep it. And the thing that's the biggest threat right now is, is the rabid left, the Antifa types, the AOCs and whatnot. We just got to make sure those people are kept at bay. And I think if the Republicans are smart, the, there's a way to do this. So this is a bell curve. And this today is going to represent the voting population. And what we see here is we got the rich and we got the poor. All right. And the Democrats control both. I mean, the Democrats control a big time the rich, the poor, without question. The Republicans control the middle class. Uh, and that's mostly right, right in here. The Republicans control basically from the, the lower middle class to the upper middle class is the Republicans territory. All right, so this is what's happening. So this space right here is hugely important. He, that's a lower middle class right there. Um, the Republicans will never get this. The Republicans won't get this because they're just a lot of these people are in Silicon Valley, Seattle, whatnot. They're just they're socialistic by nature. A lot of uh, trust the you know, they're giving they're giving their wealth from their parents. This right here, though, is it's essentially where the the voting lay and and the real wins for politics lay. And guess who are affected most by Social Security? These people right here, right there. Those are the people right there who are affected most by Social Security. If we could get a pragmatic approach, and I think this to Trump's credit, he gets all this, to get these people to shift from here, if we could get here, the Republicans will win for many years to come, without question. And look, if you're a Democrat, I'm sorry to say this, but this is the way, if I was a political average, uh, what, well, uh, just a, a political analysis or a, a proponent, this is why I say, look, you've got to go after these people right here. If you can get them, you will win for going away for years to come. And you can do good things in terms of legislation going forward. The number one thing that's on these minds is their financial situation with health care and with Social Security. The number one thing. And so the benefits of this new Social Security proposal, huge benefit right there. So let me show you why. Because I, I thought this was actually actually quite what Barton was talking about. I thought it was actually quite uh, ingenious, frankly. And, and going back to FDR, 
Look, you don't have to like FDR. I'm not a fan of FDR in the least. And people say, oh, if I was in Congress, I would not have voted for this new deal, not in the least, because it was confiscation. Do you know that he made you give up your gold coins, for instance? Did you know that they made you... Uh, uh, chop up corn in your crops because they had to keep the price high. So while people are starving, they were telling farmers by threat of law that you had to get rid of your crops to keep the price up. I mean, it's crazy. But that's what happened. And uh, you know, but you know, fast forward 80 years, and that's the law of the land is not going away. So the pragmatist says, look, this isn't going away. No one's getting rid of Social Security. It's here to stay. So let's make it solvent. Let's make it beneficial to more people because right now it's not, for the most part. Sorry. Right. So what we have here, we got the first $926, you get 90%. And the next, I think it's 926 to 5583, you get 32%. And then anything above 5583, you get 15%. And here's where the ingenious nature of this Barton proposal was. Ultimately, what's going to happen is he's going to get rid of the caps on the wages. So everyone on the left says, let's just get rid of the caps on the wages. And that, because right now it's like 135. Once you make more than 135, you no longer pay the 6.2% for Social Security. It's gone. All right. So you're just, you're, hey, that's great. I'm living large. And that's the reason for that is because you have a cap on how much you can make. And what Barton essentially does is he says, we're going to phase it in. So essentially, or eventually the cap will be gone where you're still paying Social Security wages on every single penny you make. And that's going to be based in 2040 or 2045. I think it's 45. And, and the, the, the ingenious nature of that, I, and I love it, is it says, look, even if you still make you know, $100 million, billion, trillion dollars like Warren Buffett, you're still going to get 15 cents on the dollar for your benefit that you paid into on your, remember, this is your A-I-M-E, your average index monthly earnings. So e, so here's the genius of this, I'm telling you. Once you hit a certain threshold, if you just say we're raising the cap, we're not having, we're eliminating the cap, so you're going to pay tax on every single penny. But then the second thing is you're going to have a max amount of Social Security that you're going to receive. That's confiscation. That's 100% confiscation. We're going to take from you to give to that guy over there. And that I, I don't agree with that at all. I completely don't agree with that because that's confiscation. Now, we can argue the tax code is inherently confiscation. I get that. But reality is that's the what the raising, eliminating the cap and just saying, but you're also going to cap out your benefit. The ingeniousness of it, at least that I could tell, is they don't eliminate the cap. They don't, I mean, they eliminate the cap for your wages, but they don't set a cap on how much you can get in Social Security. So in this case, the rich people are still getting more and more of a benefit from Social Security for more and more taxes they pay. They're still getting that 15% uh, bend point. So if you get a million dollars as your AIME, you're still getting $150,000 of Social Security. But the rest of that that you paid into is going for these people up here, which is, I'm just telling you, it's a wonderful way to get the rich. Now remember, who are the rich? Are they Democrats or are they Republicans? They are Democrats. So if you're a smart Republican, you say, huh, this is a wonderful way to help the rich, uh, to get the rich, right? Because Republicans, for some reason, are considered the monopoly guy. They're not. It's the exact opposite. The Democrats are the rich party. But they say this is a wonderful way to get to tax the rich without saying we're going to tax them too much. We're going to get 15% of the dollar. They're still going to benefit from it. So we're still saying at the end of the day, we're going to give them some benefit. We're not just pure confiscation because Republicans should never be, ever be in a, in a party for confiscation. That's wrong. The Republicans should never be that. So we're not confiscating. We're just saying we're going to let you pay more into it, but we're still going to give you benefit. It's, it's genius. It really is. But here's the thing, too. What these guys do, they raise this bend point to 93 all right, so now what you're saying is we're going to raise that bend point to 93, which is what the law says. So now 926, you're not getting 90%, you're getting 93% of the money. And I hope that makes sense, which means it's a big benefit for those on the lower end as well. So that's why the Democrats will support it. Because they're saying not only are you getting rid of the cap, not only are we going to get more into it because the rich people are going to pay into it more. The Republicans say, we're not confiscating anything. We're just allowing the rich to pay more of their fair share. They'll still get a benefit from it. So the Republicans can say it's not confiscation. And then the Democrats can say to their poor, we're going to give you a benefit a raise too. I think, I think the guy was saying it's like 2% or something like that. And on top of that, even more is the Democrats will say, not Democrats, what the bill says, it will be 125% of poverty level. That will be your minimum 
So right now, if uh, nine hundred twenty-six dollars, I don't know what that is. Let's say it's a you know basically uh, that's eight hundred ninety. Let's say it's uh, ten thousand dollars a year you get Social Security, and the poverty level is fourteen thousand. We're gonna give those people in the low end immediate bump up to fourteen thousand. All right, but we're gonna pay for that by right here with the rich people paying for it. So essentially what we're doing is we're taxing the Democrats on the wealthy side to pay more benefit to the Democrats on the poor side. But, but here's where it gets better too. I would, and this isn't in the plan. If I were the Republicans, I'd say raise that to 35% right there. You raise that bend point to 35%, you are now rewarding people who worked. Essentially, a lot of the people who are on the poverty side may or may not work. They may not have worked. They may not. A lot of them are on Social Security disability. I, I just don't know. And frankly, as a, as a Republican-leaning guy, that, that's not my point. My point is this true right here. How can you better them? Well, you say we're going to raise. We've already agreed to tax the rich without confiscatory policies. We've already agreed to raise the... The AIME, the bend point for the poor. So the Democrats are now, they're loving it. What we're going to do, we're going to fight for that middle right there. We're going to raise that bend point to 35%. And what, because we've got rid of the cap, the Bill Gates, the Warren Buffett, all the Mark Cubans, all those liberals out there who love donating to Democratic causes, Michael Bloomberg, they're going to pay more. They're going to pay more to help their, some of those poor people on the left, but they're also going to pay more to help some of these people in the middle class. It's, it's, it's genius. It's genius. And they're going to raise the payroll taxes by 50 basis points, so not a huge amount. I mean, I, it's not small, but I mean, you got to contribute some. I don't have any problem with that. You're going to get a Social Security bed for the rest of your life. You need to pay into it, which is what Social Security is so genius in of itself from FDR. It rewards those who actually work. That way you have to have those 10 years of, of work, the 40 credits. You have to have 40, 40 credits to get the benefit unless you're a spouse. And the 40 credits means you have to have 10 years of actual working. Now, you don't have to make that much money. I get it. But you still have to actually show up to work. Social Security rewards those who work, which is a good thing for Republicans to say. We're going to reward those to work. We're going to reward those right here who work. We're going to make them get a more benefit for working. We're not going to reward those who don't work like the uh, Alexander's, uh, what's his name, Ed Markey's Green New Deal says. If you don't work, we're going to reward you. That, that's silly. And they, they're saying, we didn't say that. They actually, without question, they did. We're not saying we're going to reward people who don't work. Our voters, the, uh, the voters on the center right, are people who work. They go to work. They go to the coal mine. They go to a cubicle. They do work. They work. They work. They, they see the value in labor. And they want to be rewarded for it. They do not want to be here. They don't necessarily care to be here, but they need to be here and kept there because they said, wait a second, I did what I was supposed to do. Why is that guy over there getting freebies when I work my tail off? And I'm just telling you, Barton, he's a Democrat. He doesn't get it. I mean, he gets it. I guarantee he gets it. But I'm, oh, Republicans get on board with that. Just say, no, 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 that's good. You made a good thing, Bart. We want to raise the, the bend point, the second bend point in the AIME for the middle class to 35%. Now, look, actuarially, what fit? I don't know. Barton's policy, go back to that, back down to 32, says actuarially it's sustainable. So I'm going to go with that. I don't, look, I haven't done it. I've looked at what the CBO says, why anyone would follow the Congressional Budget Office. I don't know. But anyway, apparently Barton's actuaries, actuaries say this is solvent. If we go to a 93% bend point, we raise the, uh, get rid of, essentially get rid of the, the, the cap on earnings, and we uh, raise the, uh, the payroll tax by 50 basis points, the employer and the employee, he says, is actuary, actuarially sound. So I'm think that's fine. If we raise this to 35%, will it be actuarially sound? I don't know. I'd let the, the actuaries figure that out. But I imagine it's still a whole lot more sounder than it is today because, again, we're raising the, the payroll and we're getting rid of the cap anyway as it is. I, I, I tell you, I think it's, it's genius politically. It'll solve a lot of the problems. It'll keep the left at bay, which is good for America. It'll bring more moderate Democrats out of the woodwork because right now we, that's what we need. We need more moderates, not moderates like squishes. We need more moderates to say, you know something? These people over here are nuts. We don't want those people uh, running our party. The Democratic Party of what I grew up on, uh, we'd love to have more hippies. Let's just say people who are welcome to others as opposed to Antifa, which is what's going on now. And, and I'm just telling you, if we could get that right there, Follow the lead of Barton, man. I'm telling you that guy. And then you can say, "Oh, we're taking care of the poor. We are. We're taxing the rich. We are. And we're gonna help out." We're going back to that, the, the uh, going back to that chart which I showed you before. 
this right here, going back to that, we're taking care of these people right here. My friends on the Republican side, you can run with that until you're blue in the face and say, we are raising your benefit by going after these people right here, but we're not confiscating that benefit. We're just letting them pay more and they still get a benefit from it too. It's a wonderful politics, wonderful politics, and it can get done and it can solve social security and it can keep the left at bay. I love it. I thought Devin Carroll did a fantastic job. Watch the dude's video. I, I, I just, I was stunned. I was stunned how much I agreed with that Democrat. Again, just goes to show you, I am on the right. No other way around that. The up here right, not this right, up here though. I believe in things that the left has, and I don't want to get into it here today, but just let's put it way, this way. There's a lot of things on the left I completely agree with, and I argue with people on the right all the time about. It boggles my mind how a freedom-loving people could agree with various things that the right wing says. I'm like, that's not freedom, man. That's, that's, uh, <laughs> that's not freedom. Let's put it that way. But right now, the left is a threat, and until we get the left at bay, uh, it's, it's scary. And so what we got to do is... The people, the common sense people, like the Bartons of the world and Mitch McConnell's and stuff like that. With Trump, that Trump agrees with this because he knows these people are critical. Those people right there are up for grabs. And the people who can get those people are going to win. And if you can win, you can do things that help everybody in America. And I hope, I hope, I hope they follow the congressman. So Devin doesn't talk about politics as much as I do. I get that. But uh, that's my rant. So I hope you like this and we shall see how this shakes out. But man, I, I'm, I'm positive. I'm optimistic about it. I like it. And I think there's a lot of good things in there. And my inclination is I have a feeling a lot of you, my brothers and sisters on the center right, would agree with that as well. So watch Devin's video I put in the show notes and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.